Welcome everyone to this Privacy Rules Privacy Espresso episode. The episode of today is part of a series where we are going to discuss about uh, the many different acts and regulations that are uh, popping up at the EU level. Uh, one of those is the Artificial Intelligence Act um, that we will discuss together with one of our EU experts, that is uh, Jean-Christophe Chevalier a partner from the law firm IDE in France. Jean-Christophe works from uh, uh, Paris, but they also have many offices all over the country. So Jean-Christophe, I would like first of all to thank you very much for being with us uh, today. And um, my first question to you is, uh, you know, very quickly, what is the Artificial Intelligence Act? What are we talking about? The Artificial Intelligence Act is a regulation proposed by the European Commission that aims establishing a legal framework for the development, deployment and use of AI systems in the European Union to ensure that AI systems used in the EU are transparent, reliable, and safe, and that they respect fundamental rights. And is it already applicable or, or when it will be applied? It's not applicable for the moment, but the AI Act was proposed by the European Commission in April 2021 and now needs to be reviewed and adopted jointly by the European Parliament and the Council of the EU to be applicable. On December 6, 2022, the Council adopted a general approach to speed up the legislative procedure and facilitate an agreement with the Parliament. Unfortunately, during the last votes in the Parliament, a discussion about that GPT and new disruptive AI application cause delay in the process. However, the Parliament recently agreed on a draft of this position, and the leading committees voted on May 11, 2023. The final vote in plenary session will take place in June 2023, so very soon. So we expect that the final negotiation between the Commission, the Council, and the Parliament will, de be will then begin, and once agreed, we can reach an agreement and then the AI Act will enter into force. Usually most of the provisions will be applicable 24 months later, during which time all the companies and their organization will have to ensure that their um, AI systems will comply with the requirements from the new regulation. So it's almost, if we compare it with the GDPR, it will be a two years period to implement the compliance program. Perfect, perfect. And, and what about the, the, the type of companies that are concerned by this uh, regulation? And, and what's an, an AI? Yeah, so first of all, it will apply to AI developers and providers. So companies and organizations placing AI system on the European market will need to comply with the requirements and obligations set out in the regulation, whether such provider or established in the member state or not. Users and operators of AI systems will also have to comply with the requirements from the regulation. This includes not only companies that use or operate AI system, but also companies located outside of EU. If the results produced by the AI system are used in a member state. Finally, the AI systems will impact European citizens and they will be interacting with them, for instance, when an AI generates an image on the internet or using ChatGPT. The AI Act aims to protect our rights and interests during those interactions. So, while lawmakers agree that consumers need to be protected, they appear unsure of what they need to be protected from. Uh, so at the end of the day, the definition of an AI system proposed by the Commission has been already amended by the Council. They have they put forward a narrower, uh, narrower definition listing specific AI techniques such as machine learning, logic, knowledge, statistics, because member states were concerned that traditional software may be included or not. However, the Parliament changed its position and deleted all the lists to, to facilitate the regulation, the regulation adaptation to a known and potentially disruptive AI technology. Okay, perfect. So that's, that's very interesting. Also, this change from the uh, last minute, let's say, change from the Parliament. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that but, was just in May. So it's very recent, actually. Very yeah. recent. Yeah. yeah. And, and what, what will these act exactly change? The three categories of AI systems uh, are identified in the AI Act, uh, which with each category being subject to specific obligation and security requirements, depending on the level of risk they pose. First, AI system with an unacceptable level of risk to people safety will be strictly prohibited. This category includes systems that deploy subliminal or purposely manipulative techniques exploit people's vulnerabilities or are used for social scoring. The AI Act also forbids emotions, recognition systems in law enforcement, 
enforcement, border management, workplace, and educational institutions, as well as the use of real-time remote bi biometric identification system in publicity, publicly accessible spaces for the purpose of law enforcement. Then the AI Act regulates high-risk AI systems that are creating adverse impact on people's safety of, of their fundamental rights. This includes AI systems that use biometric identification and categorization of human, management of critical infrastructure, education, employment, access to it, essential private services and public services and benefits, law enforcement, migration, asylum, and border control management, administration of justice and democratic processes. So as you can see, the AI Act imposes a range of mandatory requirements to the provider of such systems related to the communications, risk management systems, governance, transparency, safety, depending on their status. These systems must also be declared to the EU and where I see EMARC, which is quite a new category of constraint. Lastly, um, and I would say last but not least, uh, some, AI, some AI system which pose specific risk of manipulation, such as systems that interact with human chatbots, or systems that generate deep fakes, are subject to transparency requirements. So in practice, this means that the user must clearly be informed that it is interacting with an AI system. So at the end of the day, all the AI system can be developed and used in the EU without additional legal obligation than existing leg legislation. Perfect. Jean-Christophe, that means it sounds like, you know, many different requirements. Uh, the, the question is, it's always these, you know, at the end. Uh, what about the... Yeah, exactly. I mean, is, is it enforced? Is it going to be enforced? Which type of sanction will be applied to that, you know? Um, actually, let's go directly to the sanctions, because uh, this is something that everybody wants to hear. So um, at the moment, the, the sanctions have evolved, which is iteration of the IR Act and might change again as a result of a trial. According to the very last version proposed by the European Commission, National authorities will be allowed to find companies up to 30 million euros or up to 6% of worldwide annual turnover in two cases. First, if a prohibited AI system is placed on the European market. Secondly, if an AI system doesn't comply with the quality requirements for the data. So the supply of incorrect, incomplete or misleading information to competent authorities in reply to requests will be fined up to 10 million euros or 2% of the worldwide annual turnover. The non-compliance of the AI system with any other requirements or obligation or other regulation will be penalized up to 20 million euros or 4% of the annual turnover. So we are talking about strong sanctions. I, I see in some cases even higher than what GDPR says, because the 6% of annual turnover seems yeah. quite yeah. an interesting one. And, you know, until the act come into force, how are artificial intelligence systems regulated? So what's the situation actually? Actually, um, the, the legal framework is the GDPR, which is the main regulatory safeguard from the illicit artificial intelligence systems when they process and collect personal data. The EDPB members recently discussed the enforcement action undertaken by the Italian Data Protection Authority against OpenAI about JADGDPT, but you're aware of this. Uh, they decided to launch a dedicated task force to foster cooperation and to exchange information on possible info enforcement action conducted by DPA. Furthermore, a European DPA agency have released guidelines on the appropriate and lawful use of AI. The French CNIL, for instance, provided organizations with a self-assessment guide for artificial intelligence system. So it is an analysis grid where which they can use to assess by themselves the maturity of their artificial intelligence system about the GDPR. Perfect. As always, CNIL provides very interesting solutions to uh, you know people following uh, to it. Of course, it's one of those very relevant topics where it's, it's clear that there is the necessity for the various authorities to align and uh, and of course GDPR seems not to be enough to regulate it so this explains the reason behind this act uh, that was very interesting to to know more about so Jean-Christophe thanks a lot for for your time and for this clear and quick explanation of what the artificial intelligence act is and how much time we have and what we have to look at it was a pleasure having you uh, as well as our uh, listeners that I thank for being with us see you all to the next Privacy Espresso episode Bye. Thank you.